I'm Stuart Young. Uh, I represent Fiatech in Europe and the Middle East. I have 30 years experience at site level working with contractors at various parts of the UK infrastructure and designers. I have a passion for change in the industry uh, and I've been a keen supporter of field automation during that time. On behalf of all of us at Fiatech, I'd like to thank you for joining us today for this month's meeting of the Mobile IT Community of Interest. Today's presenter is Harry Parnell from Balfour Beatty. Harry, who will talk about the approach that Balfour Beatty has taken to improve site work processes in the M25 highway project in the UK, will take us through the implementation of the mobile devices. Before going through today's agenda, I'd like to briefly introduce Fiatech and this community of interest to those who are not members of Fiatech and those who are new participants in the community. Fiatech has a vision and a mission. Its vision is to transform the world's infrastructure delivery and operations through innovation. Its mission is it's a global community of passionate stakeholders working together to drive productivity and efficiency improvements in the capital projects industry and doing this by advancement of technology and innovative practice. Quite simply, as Jim Newman of Arriva put it, Fiatech is you. The members of Fiatech are Fiatech. Fiatech is truly global. It focuses on tech and innovation to drive productivity and efficiency. And it's made up of owners, operators, EPCs, AECs, vendors, um, subject matter experts, and academia. There's nearly 100 members and partners. And as you can see, there's, there's a number of research and development organizations in there too. There is a video, I'm not going to take you through that now, but if you go through to the Fiatech website, it, it's a, a video that was put together by the, by the members, uh, scripted by the members, well worth watching. Why mobile IT is a question that I'm often asked. Um, at the core of Fiatech's interests, we are creating this mobile community um, as mobile technology has clearly enhanced project performance, as we'll hear from Harry, um, but we believe it's only scratched the surface as yet. There are still many opportunities for the industry to increase uh, productivity, both at site and office, through improved project information flow. As we mentioned before, in Fiatech, we strive to solve practical problems and the challenges that are associated to implementing mobile technologies, which are of a practical nature. We as a community hope to realize these potential potentials, and with your help, we can make a real difference to this industry and increase productivity. The object of the community of interest is to bring together project stakeholders, uh, their ideas, and improve efficiency through the use of field um, techniques and share the knowledge to implement those ideas in the industry. This project is a joint effort between Fiatech and Comet. Comet is a UK-based organization. Its principal aim is to learn from experience to deliver measurable benefits terms of adoption of mobile tech. Participants in this community will get together in two ways. Firstly, through the monthly meetings, as today, where all participants come together to learn about specific um, applications and technologies. And secondly, participants get together through the subgroup meetings, which focus on specific topics of interest to the community, and in which participants may carry out work inside their organizations to advance the knowledge and implementation of mobile systems. The deliverables from the community developed by the subgroups would include reports, test pilots, or use cases of the work being carried out. These can give an insight into the benefits, the challenges, and the costs involved in the new and use, uh, new usable technologies and applications. Furthermore, work inside the community can, can become projects through formal project proposals. These would increase the scale of a given project and involve all respective members. So the agenda, um, we have a brief update um, to come on the subgroup meeting. Uh, then we will have Harry's presentation, which will be followed by questions and answers at the end. I did mention there was a poll during the course of the presentation. Um, your questions will be read during the, um, the questions if, if they come in during the presentation. And again, if you don't want your name or organization recognized just say so. Um, I must say that I've not had any of that since we've been doing these uh, community days, but um, 
please do say so. Um, so the subgroups, we had our second subgroup meeting last week for the mobile software group. Ian Miskinman from Comet and Bentley Systems led the discussions during the meeting. Um, participants in this meeting reported um, on focus on challenges around enabling ubiquity, ubiquity of mobile software through different tools to support the use of mobile devices. In this regard, a project has been proposed to investigate how software use is affected by the tools. There are various paths forward for this project, including recommendations from, for contractors and software developers regarding the tools that are necessary to support users in different project conditions and also the safety implications of these tools. We encourage you to take a look at, the, at this project and the discussions in the subgroup. The next meeting for the mobile software group will happen next month, dates still to be confirmed. Please let us know if you have um, any interest in the subgroups by taking the online survey, which you can see there on the screen. This will allow us to send you the appropriate notifications and uh, get you involved. Subgroup meetings are meant to encourage interaction between participants in the community. Please come prepared with questions if you have any or any insights, stories and thoughts on mobile software for job sites, as well as any potential research that you're, in, you're interested in pursuing. Okay, so today's topic, um, Mobile and Site Work at Valfabiti by Harry Parnell. Since 2012, Harry has been part of Balfa BT Major Projects Head Office Technical Services team. This now involves Harry working around the UK and Ireland, implementing government BIM processes, best practice, BIM techniques, and driving innovation on projects with the use of digital technology. He also trains and coaches members of staff, uh, the digital project delivery coordinators, to drive new work processes and procedures to achieve the project BIM execution plans during Harry's career, he's developed software to manage different information data sets hosted on a cloud-based server system. This has improved efficiencies for managing information, including database, point clouds, images, documents, and drawings. Today, Harry will present on the implementation of mobile technology on the M25, the later upgrade sections, which are uh, the first all-lane running motorway sections in the country. Harry will talk us through what he and his team have implemented to improve processes and created a 21st century culture on the project to help the project get delivered early, under budget, safely, sustainably for the JV, but also for the client. And with that, Harry, I will pass it over to you. Um, if I can just give you control of the keyboard. Harry? All yours. Hi, Stuart. Let's have a quick flick. Have you passed over the keyboard, Stuart? Yep, you've got it now. Perfect. Thank you very much. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much, Stuart, for the uh, introduction. Um, yeah, so. At the moment in time and that with inside of Balfour BT, we've been implementing the use of mobile technology for the last five years. Um, we started off sort of four, four and a half years ago with a, sort of a smartphones on a project to the A46 in the Midlands in the UK. Then from there we went on to Heathrow T2B, which recently opened with using um, mobile, mobile tablets, namely iPads, where we went to five. Then we took that technology onto a road scheme, M4 and 5 down in Bristol in the southwest. We went very quickly and rapidly from 5 to 10 to 15 to 20 devices. From the lessons on that project, it was then brought up and that and put onto the M25 scheme with myself leading. So further due at the moment in time, um, for us, we've all got a challenge at the moment in time in BIM and delivering building information modeling. Um, we've got sort of a, a snippet in the top, which I'm sure everyone's sort of very well aware of at the moment in time, what BIM actually is. But for us at Balfour BT, we basically look at this whole uh, data explosion as we go through the processes. So sort of there's data produced at design stage, then into the construction, into operation and maintaining, but that gives you then the best business outcomes and the business costs and the business outcomes because it's data. 
that kind of thing. This data needs to be collected through each of these stages going through. If the data is not collected, then basically you get inefficiencies. Uh, you don't get sort of uh, the right answers to questions later on in the pipeline. So this is where we're sort of focusing on very much at the moment in time. As at Bell for BT, we have sort of like our own sort of uh, project lifecycle line, which is like this, what you've just seen before. They're sort of going from concept design into the construction phase, into the O&M, in, into the operational readiness, and then onto the O&M. So at the moment in time, I'm going to be chatting about and that the best solutions that in the middle, which we've currently done, tested, and commissioned on the M25 project. So M25. Here it is, the M25 is the orbital motorway which runs right around London, which is the capital of the UK. Here we've got some previous schemes in yellow, which were called the initial upgraded sections, or the I, IUS. I'm going to be chatting about this section here, section 5, which is the north side of the M25, and the south side here. Two separate projects implementing mobile devices. The south section down here, we had 40 mobile devices, namely iPads, and up on this project, we've actually now, in the last last week, we've actually gone up and that to 69 mobile devices on the top section. Uh, the M25 is a, a 20, what well, was a 30 year contract to maintain the hull of this motorway and the dark blue bits going through. That's what's called a DBFO, a Design Build Finance Operate Scheme. And these schemes here are smaller schemes just to improve the area, improve the capacity and that on the actual M25. To improve the capacity, we're basically building something called MMALR, Managed Motorway or All Lane Running. This will basically turn the hard shoulder into a continuous running lane 24-7. So instead of widening the road, which we've done on these two sections by Heathrow and in Essex, we're actually not widening, we're just going to be what's it, making the, the hard shoulder usable 24-7 to go forward. There's a lot of tech technology being installed, namely gantries and other technologies such as Wavetronics to see what the actual speeds of the cars are doing to then slow down the roads to basically get the, a continuous streamline uh, driving speed to make sure there's no stoppages and blockages. So that's the background of the project. Um, the client at the moment in time in the UK, is, uh, the Highways Agency's ultimate client, they look after all the major roads and that in the UK. But then also for the M25, we have a client called Connect Plus. That, that, that is the 30-year concession, which was built up for Balfour BT, Atkins, Skanska, and Aegis. Further down the line, we've got the CJV team, which is what we're part of, myself and, that, and um, the guys you'll see in a moment, which is Skanska, Balfour BT. And then you've got the O&M team, which is the 27 years. So there's a lot of uh, client interaction that kind of it, on this project. You know, we have to sort of... Uh, educate and tell them the benefits of adopting such technologies and the use of mobile IT. I'm going to move on. Is it moving on? We've got a blockage. Stuart, can you flick down for me please, Stuart? Yeah. Okay. Tap. So, at the moment in time, Annette, on the M25, we had a very early BIM execution plan. Inside this BIM execution plan, we detailed and at very early doors and at the actual implementation of mobile technology. Uh, the lessons learned from previous schemes, such as the A46, Heathrow T2B, and the M45 project went into this implementation plan to actually see where the benefits were in the uses of mobile technology. Um, so this was very early doors before the scheme um, wasn't before sort of a ward in the contracts that didn't really go into the tenders but then on the project kind of thing they said yes we want to be doing the use of this innovation technology take us forward and our plan a bit of a, a not a joke kind of thing because it's real kind of thing that but our plan has come together and that one with, which was the BIM execution plan in the very beginning next slide please Stuart so at the moment in time, and that to implement new technologies, um, we don't just go sort of gun ho on all the schemes and that kind of thing, implement every single thing. We always highlight there's a process required. And at the moment in time, that the 
process was kind of in the use of mobile technology. Um, there had to be sort of investment decisions. Um, in, during this investment decision time, we had to basically assess what the connectivity was like. Uh, connectivity is looking at various sort of like 3G, 4G, um, use of site Wi-Fi. Um, on the M25, we have used the use of uh, 3G technology, but some areas were completely flat sticks. There was no connectivity whatsoever. So we supplemented that in small areas with the use of site 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 side Wi-Fi. So the rollout plan that we put in there was basically how many devices we were going to have, and then we looked at training and supports and that by certain individuals kind of thing which have become champions. So there'd be go-to people on the project. There's no point installing kind of these innovations if there's no one there to basically be the go-to person and that to actually ask the questions. As soon as something doesn't work, there's a bit of a culture where, okay, it don't work, I shall not do that process. Um, project adoption, because we built some champions, it was adopted a lot easier. It was integrated into the systems. And now at the moment in time, we're collecting data out in the field, which can go be hand over for operational readiness. Next slide, please, Stuart. So the team. At the moment in time, there's myself in the middle on the right-hand side, and that with uh, the double chin, people call it. And then I had two people with me on the scheme and project. Um, you've got Simon McGowan, who's on the north section at the moment in time, and that, a Balfour BT BIM coordinator. And we had Carl Henderson on the south section, who was a Skanska coordinator. So it was a joint venture between Skanska and Balfour BT. So we had this one person out on each scheme to actually drive and that kind of thing, the BIM implementation plan, the coordination, any innovation, but obviously the BIM processes and that kind of thing, I've mentioned the 3D models and the data and getting the models used by the project site teams during their uh, daily coordination meetings. Next slide please Stuart. So no. I'm going to hand over to Stuart just to basically do the first polling question. Yeah. Okay, the first question is, how have you tackled the implementation of mobile technology and projects? If we could all vote on that, please. No, vote, no votes coming in yet. Um, let me just try that again. Okay, I'm going to come back to that. Poll not showing up. Um, we seem to have a blocked poll on the first question. Okay. It's not showing. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next slide. Harry, back to you. Yep, indeed. Okay, sure. I'm going to close down the poll so we'll see the poll on the screen. Yeah, sorry. Yep, so at the moment in time, the M25, we're using iPad devices. There's lots of different mobile devices out in the project. So you've got the iPads, you've got the Nexuses, you've got the Windows tablets. Um, but at the moment in time, for us, that we've gone namely for iPads at this current moment in time. Um, we are testing at the moment in time Windows Surface tablets as well, so we're not just one provider. Uh, we're looking at trying to every single device. Um, you can see around the outside, we actually use a gumdrop case. Normally, if there's a live presentation with me in the room, I'll be banning my iPad on the table right now, which I've done at a Comet conference a few uh, months ago, on how durable the actual gumdrop case is. Um, we haven't, we've only had one damage, as one which had a hairline cracking, and that's because someone dropped the actual device face down onto the protective screen and add just like a hairline crack going across the side of it. Still can be used, the cracking case. 
But what do we use these devices for? Um, at the moment in time, we're viewing and navigating the 3D modeling site so people can actually see what needs to be built out on the project. Instant access to emails at the moment in time is basically the guys can access that information, communicate back to the site office. The ability to take photographs and mark them up and email them back to relevant people back in the office, this actually saves the project a lot of time and that kind of thing instead of uh, traveling to and from site. For us on the north section M25, if we left our compound, drove to the very end of the job and back again, that is basically an hour and a half on a good run. And that on a bad run, it could be the M25, as some of you might know, that could be something like two and a half hours, four hours, and that kind of thing. If there's an accident blocking the actual highway. So there's a sustainability saving there, which will come to savings a bit later on. On the project, we have access to the business collaborator which access all our drawings and documentation or specifications. So this can be accessed through and out of the web to basically get the latest information. We'll go into a bit more detail on how we've basically created forms and set forms up and filled them out on the site. Um, we're using an app called Fixon, and that kind of thing by a company called Snapfile, which actually can locate us GPS against where we are on site and against something which we call chainage. If you're in America, that's possibly the term station, where you can see where we are against the master string line going against the along the job and along the design. We've also started to load BIM unique identifiers to record the site forms against unique ID, which I'll talk about a bit later on. We've trialled the use of FaceTime on Skype. This only works now on Wi-Fi connectivity, so on the south section we had a Wi-Fi network on the project where basically engineers could actually call back to the office where we've got site wi where we've got Wi-Fi in the office or they could talk and that kind of thing a mile away from each other just instead of having the phone call. If you have a phone call and someone calls up, you can then just say, I've got this issue out on site. You try and explain it, they say, I don't know what you're talking about. I go out to site, they will look at something and go, I understand now, yes, you can carry on doing the work. It's taken that person around about 30 minutes to get to that location, and now they're going back to, back to the office again. So the use of FaceTime and Skype, I see something like that going forward for the future. Obviously, the other ones are available as well. But one of the safety benefits, though, is actually showing videos for Toolbox Talks. Um, people have been stopped on site because they're doing things unsafely. But then, kind of thing, that then the guys can stop the works, show people videos on the iPad on this is how you should actually be doing the work. So that's a very good benefit as well. So moving on to the next slide. Got uh, we've got, sorry, we jumped, we jumped on then. Um, sorry about that. We've got poll question two. Um, now, hopefully it will work. I, I think what we, we may do here is, um, so we've got a complete set of poll questions. We may send this out through email if, if people are happy with that, and we, we'll do it that way afterwards. But let's see how we get on with this next question. What are the views? Um, what are the views from a health and safety um, from health and safety teams about the section and project and, and the use of mobile technology tools. Um, one, they cannot be used on site. They can only be used in delineated safe areas. They can only be used with carrying cases. They can only be used, oh, they can be used freely on site or other not applicable. That's interesting. Hovering around about 10% on the first one, 50% delineated sheet pen areas as we've uh, started to uh, call them and 15% can be used freely on site. Got some liberal minded individuals, that's great. And then 25% at the end, 80%, just give it another second or two. Still voting, still voting. I'll close that one down. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Harry, on to the next question, on to the next slide. Yep, thank you very much. So at the moment in time, and I spoke about the processes and that kind of thing, and basically implementing these on a project. Sorry, it's come through. Right, it's stopped now, stop now. Yep, stop. Um, yeah, so what's involved is training. You sort of can see, so, what's it, you see Carl Henderson here basically doing one-on-one -on -one training, and Simon McGowan here doing basically lunchtime lessons learned group training but also in that kind of thing we piggyback coordinate uh, daily coordination meetings as well 
basically take just five, ten minutes at the back end to teach people new things to do with uh, various technologies and various innovations we do on the scheme. For the issuing of the iPads, we basically do a standard two-hour session. Um, it's basically kind of thing like, first of all, we sign in the, the uh, document to say you are taking ownership of this device. Uh, the next one is that kind of thing, a health and safety talk to basically go through and that kind of thing, the do's and don'ts, what you can do, what you can't do. Um, a lot of our devices that have you already seen come with a gumdrop case, but we also use an Otterbox latch, which basically makes it easier to hold when climbing up and down ladders. Um, if I was doing a live demo, I could show you that, but I should have put a photograph on the screen. Um, but no, so at the moment in time, that kind of thing, that you'll only be able to get the best out of these innovations on your scheme and projects if you have these champions always there. I must say, kind of thing, the culture in that kind of thing on the project has completely changed, but it's only because there's been people on the project um, adopting the technology. But it's not just Carl and Simon pushing it, you've got other engineers using the technology as well. Yep. So at the moment in time on the project, there has been a huge culture change and a culture shift. Um, you can see the guys on the left hand side using the iPad to basically view drawings and data and information and also you've got guys out on site as well. Um, the guy out on site is a guy called Keith and he is past retirement age, he's 73 years of age. He's our inspector, he loves his mobile device. Before that he used to take out his uh, inspector utility belt that with his clipboard, his pen, his camera, his documents, all out on site. But now, kind of feeling that he can leave that all in the office because it's all on his mobile device. It isn't a not being ages. It's not a young person thing. Older people can actually adopt the technology as well, as long as they're supported and got the people to go to if they have any questions. Which Keith is one of our best users on the project. Okay, thanks, Harry. I'll uh, I'll roll out number three. Um, how have you got over the hurdle of site connectivity? Um, okay, I'll launch that one. Have a go with those questions, please. Eighty percent have voted. That's great. Eighty-five. Eighty-five. Any more takers? No, nope, I think that's about right. Okay. Close that one, and I'll share that on the screen. Can everybody see that? Gentlemen, can you see that one? Harry? Indeed, yep. Mando? Yep, I can see that. Yep. It's quite an interesting stack, kind of thing. Everyone's going for installing access points on site. That was yeah, good. yeah. Interesting. Well, that's consistent with what uh, what I've been hearing. Okay. Um, we go on, to the, um, go on to the next one. So back to you for the next um, slide. You okay? Let's have a look. No. Okay. Yep, perfect. So at the moment in time, it's not just in that sort of um, Skanska Balfour BT sort of adopted this technology. We've educated our supply chain members as well. Um, first of all, that we create one pages in that kind of thing, which we share in that kind of thing, number two, back to our, uh, our, back to the highways agency, back to Skanska HQ, back to Balfour B HQ on our innovations, what we actually do. And Atkins have basically adopted kind of feeling that the use of actual QR codes on every single design document. Um, with the QR codes on the document, we can scan these on the mobile device, and it will take you to Business Collaborator. What it will do is it will take you to the latest drawing on Business Collaborator. So you've got a reassurance, um, a quality assurance process where I can scan it to make sure I've got the latest document on me. And that in, whether you're in the field or in the office. Um, here in the middle, aggregate TM, 
the guys had a process where they were filling out paperwork on a daily basis. This was their inspection forms to make sure the traffic management suited to Chapter 8, which is the standards in the UK for traffic management um, signs and markings and protection barriers. They basically bought mobile devices. We educated them in some processes and filling out forms digitally. They bought some mobile devices and they now don't have to do the process of taking all the paperwork all the way down to their head office at Henley on Thames and then drive them back. They can just do it on a day, zip these up and send them to the office. Driving yeah. to Henley on Thames is around about a, an hour's drive away and back, so that's two hours. So you're taking about the actual road journey and trip because you're digitalizing that information. And also kind of thing that we basically use a company called Roadhouse, which is taking again a form, filling this out and what they've done during the day. But what we've started to do in that kind of thing is actually have the signature fields and that kind of thing at the bottom. So we're doing these uh, digital signatures to basically sign off these documents as well. So that is what we're currently doing supply chains. So it's not just us contractors, but we're also getting supply chains to adopt these future processes as well. Next, please, Stuart. Ms. Biss. Thank you. I think Q check pass over. Yeah. So at, at the moment in time, and that, why is electronic data better? Was it filling out specific pieces of information about the works that are delayed on site for a specific day? So you need to collect this information all the time. Next, please. So this is currently what happens out on site. Um, guys fill out these daily diaries, they get very messy, crimpled. Information's in there, but you're not really sharing that information with anyone else. Another person sitting next to you in the office is, could valuably need that information which is inside the project daily diary. Oh, they had a bit of a issue there with the formatting for some reason. So, um, so ask yourself the following questions. Who recalled the information? Where is it? What format is it in? How much is in there? Who else could have this recalled information? How long does it take to find this information from paper to paper records? So you want to try and digitalize this and get rid of all this waste. And that kind of thing that you need to basically have sort of like a... Uh, next one, Stuart. Yeah, that's right. Okay. You need to basically have a database and that kind of thing of this information. So this is where we started to look at this to... Uh, collect the data in the field and put it into a format, kind of a name, idea of the person, the date when it was collected, an entry, and filling out this information. So this name could be searchable, that kind of thing, in the actual processes. Just like what we're seeing, like the Mark Pugh Triangle at the moment in time is collecting this data digitally in the process, and that in our BIM cycle. So we're not doing the paper of things anymore, we're basically using it in a digital environment or a common data environment. Next, please, Stuart. Don't seem to have control at all. No. So, M4 and 5 basically trialled electronic data diaries using BC. Which wasn't adopted. Sorry, wasn't adopted for use by the site management team. a bit more effort kind of feeling that was that they wanted to make it filterable and searchable. Go on, Stuart. Go on, it's, it's going. Yep. So why is electronic data better? Was it at the moment in time that kind of thing we need to basically assure kind of thing that sort of our uh, inspectors kind of thing how much has been signed off by, by uh, our site team, so our inspectors, by our engineers and um, to the client. So has 10% sign off from the designers on this team actually happened? Have you got all the check sheets that have been needed? And how long did, how long does it take to check a green file? Um, I mentioned green file. On us for highways, we basically need to fill out these green files. This is basically sort of like the O and M file, the health and safety file, and all the quality documentation. So these files are basically each individual discipline 
So all the check sheets and that kind of thing need to go into these files. At the moment in time, it's still a contractual deliverable to do this hard copy process, but this is where we're trying to develop from that with the use of digital technologies and mobile devices to streamline this process a lot more easier because we don't want to be sort of uh, printing out all these documents going forward. So this is our goal at the moment in time is to basically ask a question, how much has been signed off in that file? Has it been signed off by an engineer? Has it been signed off by an inspector? Then can we please close that out, that green file out, which then goes on to PTU, which is permit to use in that kind of thing in highways terms at the end of the, to basically open up the road to the client and to the running public. So at the moment in time and that with electronic data, we want to have the process to look at an analytics and trends and that kind of thing, what's happening, what's not happening out on site. Uh, we want to basically start moving away from paper documents because you don't have to sit there and count and that kind of thing, how many uh, near miss cards have I got, count how many daily briefing sheets have I got, um, who's basically completed the daily briefings in total. Um, it's trying to get away from asking these questions, getting someone to manually look at this and actually do this with electronic formats. Okay, thanks, Harry. We've got um, the final poll question. Um, how many mobile devices are in your company? Um, so everybody can see that. First one is uh, 0 to 10, 11 to 100, 101 to 1,000, and uh, uh, number four is other, not applicable. Okay. 80%, 85, keep going, keep going, uh, I think everybody's, I think everybody's, um, everybody's voted now, okay, thank you very much for that one, I'll share the results, can everybody see those? Yep. Yep, interesting. Yes, I can see. Goodness me, goodness. Okay, uh, right. We'll go on to the next, on to the next slide, Harry. Electronic green files. Yep. Uh, next one, please. Okay. So before on the M four and five, we started to use an app, which is on the App Store called Form Tools. With this application, you can take a PDF form and then start putting boxes in the locations where you need to fill out some information. These boxes could be uh, drop down menus, adding the date field, um, adding free text boxes, um, drop down fields, etc., and sign it at the bottom. Um, the only thing with this app was you would have to do it on the actual iPad device. And also kind of thing that the format of that was basically only could be done on the device. Um, this process took quite a long time to basically generate all the QA forms, all the health and safety forms. So it's sort of a, it's not been an, an easy start of it, but obviously you have this development phase and looking at what the best tools are to do the process required. This app also had the functionality to extract out information into a CSV file, which is where we wanted to basically move towards. But the creation of the forms wasn't the best tool at that time. So now what we do is that kind of thing, we're actually using Adobe Acrobat Pro, which is on the desktop. So we can take our PDF forms and do the same processes. We can add boxes and that in the locations on the quality form, which need to be sort of filled out by uh, freehand, by drop down menus, by radio buttons. So all the different types and that kind of thing you can fill out on a form. We can basically manage that and design that form to work as easily and efficient out on site. With this as well, when the forms basically come back in to our uh, web dev server, which we have to manage these, um, we can then extract that information out into a CSV file. Because each box is individually named for the result that we've required, you can then get this information out 
into an electronic format or electronic CSV file. So from there, once we've got that extracted, you can start then looking at some analytics. So we started off in that with uh, our drainage team and we basically were looking at how much slop drain is installed. So this is the precast unit which you see on the highways and motorways. Um, so from the information which you just saw, you can start looking at total linear meterage which has been installed, how many check sheets have been produced, number of shifts and that kind of thing that undertaken to actually install it, percentage of sheets signed off by SBB engineers, potential sheets signed off by inspectors and percentage sheets completion on individual check sheets by SBB. So here you can start getting some analytics and some information and where in that kind of thing, that production levels have not been that, that um, uh, on time or on program, then basically we've got comments and stuff that kind of thing, the reasons why we couldn't achieve them, whether it was a concrete and that kind of thing wasn't cured properly. And that, or basically there wasn't enough resources on site to basically do the task that was being done. So we started off in that kind of thing just focusing on the section that kind of thing that, on that was a drainage team. So I mentioned earlier on kind of thing that sort of a before slide is basically 5B and now we're implementing that completely across all disciplines. So disciplines I mean drainage, um, comms, street lighting, uh, structures, geotechnical, all the different disciplines we have in a highway scheme which is uh, 22 and basically they've all now got all their check sheets electronic in electronic format using Adobe Forms with the app Adobe PDF. So at the moment in time that to basically share this information we've actually got this on a web dev server. With the web dev server this basically mirrors the project server back in the office. So if no one else can access it, it's basically a secure view back to the server in the office where all our information is stored. So out in the field, I can basically navigate through the server, click on my document, fill out all my information, save the document as another file, and then save it back onto the server. So when the guys come back in the office, they can print it off and put it in a green file. But also on the web dev server, we have um, got leaders in each team which can basically extract out the information using Adobe Acrobat Pro and basically put that into their project trackers like what you saw a minute ago on the previous slides. Next please Stu. No, keep going a few. So um, at a moment in time and that kind of thing now we're looking at HA databases. Um, HA have many different databases and that this one we're showing on the screen at the moment in time is called Haddam's HADDMS. This is the drainage database. There are I think there's about 18 different databases which we need to populate at the back end of the job. So the data has to be in a common format and make sure it is all correct and enters correctly to go and pass over into the HA databases. So this is the like in the BIM terms, kind of in sort of a soft landing. So we've developed forms which will basically collect and that kind of thing at 100% compliance to the Haddams database. So on screen at the moment in time you can see various uh, unique IDs um, existing Eastings and Northings which you can basically take from the GPS kits and put onto the, put onto the forms. Um, you've got some intelligence on this form where you can actually see where you've got the uh, cover level and the invert level and then basically you've got the depth and that kind of thing automatically calculated then you've got all your yes no questions and then you've got all these other drop down menus as well kind of thing so you're making sure you're collecting the right data and the right information. Um, if you don't collect the right information then the system, the database system at the back end which the asset maintainer is using will basically say this is non-compliant and a lot of time and that would be wasted and that kind of thing is trying to retrofit the data, get the data to work to be accepted into the system. So there's a lot of work there but we've done with Connect Plus Services into basically making sure that all the fields are correct, they're all named correctly, then our guys have been educated on site to go and do sort of like inspections to collect all the information and that which is required for the HA databases. So hopefully, so yes we are receiving a soft landing of this data over to them.
So we mentioned earlier on in that kind of thing that the information there for basically HA databases, but what also about financial databases? Um, the commercial team at the moment in time have to basically see, well, how much do we pay that kind of thing, our subcontractors and our supply chain on the work they've actually done. So I showed this Roadhouse form earlier on, but what we've done actually in Adobe Acrobat Pro is actually put some rates for the supply chain in the back of this form as well. So you can actually hide information in these forms. So when they infill out sort of like the unit lengths and date completed and inspections, you can actually then behind that, the commercial team when they receive this can open or show some fields where you actually get some rates and that kind of thing which they can be paid. So that's where we're currently going at the moment in time is trying to basically get the commercial team and the commercial rates inputted into inspection forms to help that the commercial teams out going forward. So with all this at the moment in time, here's some figures up on screen. Um, at the Comic Conference, which was a few months ago, there was a question that kind of thing out on how many hours are saved with mobile devices. Um, there was a lot of uh, interest in that kind of thing in the conversation, and uh, I basically put my hand up with uh, Ian Miskavin and basically chose three. And if you flick and that comes to the next slide, Stuart, that is what we got on the project as well. Three hours on average. How we got these calculations was we sent out questionnaires to the project teams. So whoever had an iPad device, which were the sort of uh, the junior section engineers, the section uh, sec junior section engineers, the section engineers, uh, the agents, that kind of thing. That's all the people which are out in the field and that collect information data. They replied back to a questionnaire, and the average from that questionnaire was three hours a week. So engineer hourly rate on average about thirty-five pounds. Average out week saved was free. An engineer, and that kind of thing, that's sort of like 48 weeks, but sort of like will be, we now have added that slightly, taken away bank holidays, so it's 47, which saves around about £5,000 per person. If times that by the amount of iPads, you're looking kind of in around about £200,000 in, in savings, just for efficiency. So that is basically the person having the data out in the field, filling out the forms in the field. This is not talking about sustainability just the efficiency of an engineer having a mobile device. So this is the information for section two. Because there was more devices, isn't that kind of thing that's even increased now on section five on the north section, these are the savings which we're getting. At the moment in time, we're looking at doing the calculations for, for sustainability, how much CO2 emissions have been reduced. So we've got a different questionnaire out to the guys on site to basically see how many journeys they are saving. And it got at the moment. So moving forward onto the future, and that was we're basically looking at sort of our called DAO's process and management. Um, currently, we've got a system called OnTrack, and that which is sort of a, an online management system. It currently works on HTML5, so it can be used on Apple devices, Android devices, or Windows devices. So you don't have to be sort of a one company. Or one product being used. Um, next. Next piece, Stuart. So just a quick screenshot. Yep. Oh, you can has it gone too far? Is that okay? Ah, that's okay. So at the moment in time, that kind of thing, we have this master works list, that kind of thing. So people are out in the field and record in something called a snap file. Uh, that information gets recorded into a database, which you can see behind the screen. This information goes into a track, and that's so you've got works in, uh, you have works parts, just behind here is works allocated, then works completed, then works approved. So at the moment in time and that you can basically see an image of where something's been collected and data which is actually being uh, collected with that actual snap file. Next slide please, Drew. Yeah, so here you can basically, yep. Okay. So the internet connection. Yep. So here you can basically see various different snap files along the full length of a job. Next. And this is basically sort of like the card view on all the different ones which we have got on the actual project. Uh, we've got some new images which hasn't been updated on this. Next slide. 
Yeah, so at the moment in time and that, I've sort of shown some processes with PDF forms. So we haven't got time to go through all the processes and that kind of thing at the moment, but some of the best. We talked about QR codes and use of QR codes for assurance. We've talked about PDF forms and that kind of thing as well. And also kind of thing that sort of we've looked at what we're doing on our Dales tracking and stuff like that. Um, some slides which have gone into this presentation is basically how we link this back to the actual BIM model as well. Um, if people want to sort of uh, discuss with how we link this back to the 3D model, we can uh, talk about that or you've got my details on screen now. Um, you've got my email address, my phone number and also I've got my Twitter account as well. Now if you guys want to follow me or get in touch with me. But um, the main thing is at the moment in time and that we're developing our process on taking these PDF forms, adding the BIM unique identifier putting this into a MySQL database and then linking it back to our 3D models which have got the same unique ID. And so um, I think we've gone slightly over time, but thank you very much everyone for listening. Over to you Stuart. Well thank you very much Harry, um, that was uh, fascinating. Um, we've now got um, a little spot for some questions, um, and if I can just get the questions up on the screen, uh, we can... Uh, Bear with me a second. Oh, we have a long list of questions. Okay. Um, first, I'll, I'll apologise that the voting panel didn't uh, it didn't seem to function at the beginning. As I mentioned um, after the first couple, what I intend to do is everybody that's attended today, and if, if nobody's any objections, I'll send out the polls through uh, through the email system uh, and see if we can do it that way. I think there's a there's a way that we can make that work. Um, some of the results that we got there on the first, on the on the last few, I thought were uh, were fascinating. But I think to make the survey complete, we should maybe run the uh, run the thing in its entirety um, with the first two questions included as well. So apologies again for that. Um, but the first question I've got that, that's come in is um, is how did you manage the, the, the transition from paper-based forms to electronic forms? How was it received by the team? Uh, and that was from Colin Muirhead, Harry. So at the moment in time, that kind of thing, that sort of um, try, we made a decision earlier on in the project in our BIM execution plan that we wanted to go digital. Um, in that process, not on the process map, we basically asked what forms needed to basically be um, generated into electric forms, and then we need to then basically make sure the people filling out them forms had a mobile device. So we had to basically map out kind of thing that sort of our process, then our people, then the technology. So as long as kind of thing that we can implement, uh, so that's why we focus just on the drainage first to test out the process and make sure everyone's got the right kit and equipment, and then we can then move on with rolling out kind of that all the forms kind of thing that we sort of uh, we've got in the scheme and project. Okay, thank you. I hope that uh, answers the question, Colin. Um, the next question we've got is from Rob Braun. Uh, Rob asks, what system is being used for forms and data collection? How is validation performed? So at the moment in time, that sort of, uh, the forms are basically now PDF Expert, uh, P, oh, sorry, um, Adobe Acrobat Professional, and that's creating the forms. That's also creating all the drop-down menus and all the radio buttons and making sure that form actually is collated and that kind of thing and process properly. So that's how we generate the forms and then the exportation of them forms, we then basically take that into uh, Excel at the moment in time or Microsoft Access and um, validating the data. We try and make and that kind of thing, that's sort of like the drop down menus and that kind of thing so you don't have to put in as many freehand text fields. So, um, so for data validation that's how we're trying to get over it and basically making sure that people don't have to put in freehand data, shall we say. So um, yes, it isn't 100% clean kind of thing, so you're going to get some anomalies in that in freehand text, but we're trying to stop um, the engineers with that, op with that option and getting rid of freehand text, so then the data should be the correct data we need to go further forward. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, again, I hope that answers the question, Rob. Um, next question in is uh, from John Healy. Uh, John asks, was there any appetite for developing and publishing to the App Store a specific form tool for the project? Um, at the moment in time, that kind of thing, that sort of, um, 
we've had on other projects where we've got apps generated for health and safety, like um, reporting of near miss cards. Um, was it sort of like health and safety cards? Um, these were done on sort of like Android devices and stuff like that kind of thing. So we're currently in, we are creating apps and stuff like that kind of thing, but we haven't actually put anything on sort of like the open market sort of developed by us. Normally our process would be that we'll find, um, get our idea and that kind of thing. We'll find out what where the gap is in a model, develop that idea or stuff internally, then find someone to partner with and that kind of thing to develop the app. And then we'll go on from there. But at the moment in time, that kind of thing, the processes which you've seen today are regularly available and that kind of thing adopted by all. Adobe uh, Acrobat Professional is around about £300, and that kind of thing, and the PDF Expert app is around about £7 on the actual app store. So, um, and the Android store as well. So, um, yeah, so at the moment in time, that kind of thing, it's something which we are looking into and we have done before in the past, uh, is actually developing our own applications. Okay, so thank you. So, thank you, Harry. Um, next question we've got is uh, again from Rob Braun. Um, Our saved is great. Is there an expected overall ROI? How much does the system cost to set up and operate? Okay. So at the moment in time, and that sort of um, on was it on the next project and that kind of thing. That is a project called Manchester Smart Motorways, which is sort of um, obviously up in Manchester Junction Eight, all the way down to Twenty Two. It's a quite a large scheme which is the same all lane running. Um, for a master ROI return investment, I've actually gone and said kind of thing that is sort of 1% of the project value. On the M25, and that we actually uh, got back in that kind of thing at 2.5% of the actual project value. Um, can I put down that was all to BIM? No. And that kind of thing, but I can say kind of thing, half of that we've proved, and that kind of thing was down to BIM processes and workflows. So just seeing and that kind of thing, that them figures there, that went to kind of thing, that the uh, overall sort of a return investment. Um, regarding the process and the cost that you've seen, I mentioned that in the previous comment. Um, we use Adobe Acrobat Professional. Um, we've used PDF Expert, which is six ninety nine app, and our iPad devices and that kind of thing sort of cost obviously around about five hundred pounds. Um, all in. Rounding it up, looking at about a thousand pounds for the device, for the for the gumdrop cases, for everything, all the apps and that kind of thing that we use, and all the other processes that we actually got. Um, but yeah, so you're looking at around about sort of uh, the savings on the M25 and our ROI return investment. We spent four grand, we saved two hundred grand. Fantastic. Um, yeah, a good uh, a good model to uh, benchmark against. Okay, well, I have no more questions, Harry. Um, what I'll do is I'll carry on with the rest of the, uh, the presentation. So thank you very much for that, and thank you for the questions from uh, our attendees, and, and uh, thank you for the answers, Harry. Um, okay, so just to carry on with the rest, um, a couple of announcements to make here. Um, our next uh, community meeting is on the 16th of July, same time, so again, save the date. Um, we meet every third Wednesday of each month, uh, 3 p.m. UK time, uh, 9 a.m. US Central. Um, and then we've got the meetings in August, September, October, November, and December. We've got some interesting presentations lined up for each one of those sessions. Um, again, tune in, um, follow, the, uh, follow the emails that come in and the, and, and the webinar notifications. Uh, it'd be great to, great to have you along. Um, one other thing I do, I just want to go through is um, is join the community and, and um, look out for the announcements and the follow-up discussions. I did mention about the subgroups. There's some very interesting discussions going on there. Uh, the previous um, webinars have been recorded and are available on on YouTube. Again, if you can go through the um, FearTech website, you can you can access those uh, and and follow us through uh, Fitter at the uh, <laughs> FearTech website and Twitter and Facebook uh, links. Um, look out for some of the news, that, that, that the exciting news that's, um, that's around at the moment on, uh, on, on the mobility and uh, mobile IT aspects. Um, but I'd, say, I'd like to say thank you again for, for attending today. Thank you very much to Harry and Bal for BT to come along and, and talk about mobile tech. Um, some fantastic insights, um, some great things being done, and uh, lots of efficiency savings being had. Um, so with that, I'd like to draw this to a close. I'm sorry I'm a couple of minutes over, but thank you very much for coming along, and uh, we'll see you all next time.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.